Hello and welcome to the penultimate Top of the Pops reaction of the year and the penultimate one in the series, sort of the series. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on. Hello, Your hosts are Peter Powell and Janice Long. Oh, starting off with a good one today. This is an episode dated the 29th of November 1984. So this was, what, 39 years ago today, as in the day this goes up on YouTube, that this was broadcast. And we're starting with Nick Kershaw and The Riddle. Uh, I love The Riddle. Great song. Um, I also like the Gigi D'Agostino cover version that came out about 18, 19 years after this. Um, but I'm a big GG fan anyway. So welcome to another Top of the Pops reaction. Um, those of you who watched who tuned into last month, which was an edition from October 1996, will know that I said that I'm winding this series up. And I, I do worry that, as, especially as I'm doing these live, that I didn't really explain myself as to why, you know, as to give my proper reasons why. I mean, I think I mentioned about just me feeling this series had gone a little bit stale and repetitive for me. And I feel I'm kind of making the same sort of remarks and giving the same reactions, really. Um, but I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, I've been doing this series now. Uh, I call it a series, but I suppose it is in a way. For uh, over four years now, I think. And although next month, which I have, a, have planned for, uh, will be the finale as far as regular monthly uploads are concerned, I... Um, I do still intend to do them occasionally because it is a format that's, you know, I do, I've got fondness for. I do realise as well, of course, that um, the Top of the Pops Reaction series are my most popular videos on my YouTube channel by a long stretch. And I do really thank and appreciate everyone who watches these in their hundreds um, every month. Uh, and there'll always be the back catalogue there. But anyway. I've talked about uh, the future and the future of this series uh, too much and talked over a good song here by Nick Kershaw. Uh, uh, Nick and uh, at least a couple, maybe all of his band there, have got Feed the World t-shirts on. Of course, this is um, at the end of November 1984, almost Christmas. You know, Christmas 84 was all about Band-Aid. Had Band Aid, do they know it's Christmas been recorded at this point? I get the feeling it probably had been because they're all wearing these t shirts that's associated with Band Aid and then later on Live Aid. Um, so Band Aid would probably go in. Uh, I don't think, I think it came out either the first or the second week of December, so probably a bit early for it to, to feature in today's chart, but we'll see. I'm sure we'll get a countdown later on, unless I've cut it, copyright. Um, I've only ever reacted to one 1984 edition before, um, so I'm glad to get another one done, and that was a good start to have, the riddle. Alright, Eurythmics and Sex Crime. From the film 1984, apparently this is at number six. I'm assuming um, it's not a new entry. No, I think it would have said if it was. Um, so uh, this was from the soundtrack to the film 1984, which was based on the George Orwell novel. Uh, not a book I've read. I know it's quite kind of a, it's one of those sort of, you know, when you get like your lists of 100 books you must read in your life, I think 1984 is the is one of the ones that's always in those sort of lists. It's like a kind of important bit of literature, but um, I suppose quite appropriate for 
a film adaptation of the book to come out in the year 1984. Obviously the book was written many decades prior. I'm not sure if it was Orwell. I'm assuming it might have been sort of 40s or 50s, but um, I don't know. I would say I'd put some info in the ticker bar, but um, and I might do for it, but because uh, I've probably said all I really need to say about the Eurythmics themselves uh, in previous re uh, previous uh, Top of Pops reactions. I do remember this, kind of, uh, as in the song. I've never seen the film, never read the book. Uh, I don't know if the film got very good reviews, really. I don't know, it's not one that... Uh, it looks kind of big budget for its time, and... You know, I dare say it was well hyped, but I'm not sure... I don't know, I don't think it's a film that people kind of look back on and say, oh yeah, that's a classic of its genre. I mean, it'll be some sort of dystopian, sort of... alternate reality kind of thing, because, you know, to the best of my knowledge, that was what Orwell's 1984 was, really. Um, but... Eurythmics, I've never been a massive fan. I've talked about them not only in Top of the Pops reactions, but also in other videos. And uh, just just a duo, an act I couldn't fully get into, into to be honest. Uh, the video was alright. That was, I suppose, a good promo for the film. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Relates to Ah. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned Band Aid there, so yeah, it sounds like it's been recorded, I know it was Rush released, and um, it's probably going to be in next week's chart by the sound of it, and straight in at number one, I'd have thought. Anyway, number 15, All Join Hands from Slade. Another band who I feel I've uh, reacted to uh, at least a couple of occasions. Kind of feel like I'm looking back at old reactions when my memory allows me to. But um, this was obviously Slade's. Maybe not official, but they're kind of, you know, let's have a sort of outside stab at the um, Christmas number one for 84. Because they were unlucky not to get it in 83. Although, Only You by Flying Pickets, which stopped my oh my from getting to number one at Christmas 83. I mean, that was massive um, for the Flying Pickets. But Slade, I think they had three weeks at number two, so, you know, it was probably close running um, during at least one or two weeks in December. Um, I do like this song by Slade, actually. Um, it's weird, I seem to enjoy some of Slade's later stuff more than the kind of glam stomping 70s heyday to be honest this has got very sort of um, could be a football terrace anthem sort of feel to it and uh, the fact that people are holding up Slade scarves in the crowd is uh, the crowd the audience is um, is give it any scar well no I think they're just banners really but you know in the shape of a scar scar shape yeah um, it's been a decent edition so far I know we're only three songs in uh, but Nick Kershaw always loved the riddle Eurythmic Sex Crime uh, I think that's probably one of their stronger singles actually I would go as far as say I liked it without loving it and this is one of my favourite Slade singles. It's not my oh my, this one. Um, it, nothing is for me. I just love my oh my. I think it's brilliant. Um, but I do like this. I do like all joint hands. Um, so I have no complaints from having almost randomly chosen this episode. I did want to do another one from 84, and with the be we only doing November and December as part of the regular monthly um, reactions, then, you know, really it would have to be one week in November that I chose, and, you know, this one uh, just came up, and I thought, why not? And so far, I've not been disappointed with my choice. But I don't really know what's coming. I kind of get the feeling I should know 
vaguely some of the stuff that might be in the chart around this point at the end of 84. I don't know if this gets much higher than 15. I've got a feeling this might be its peak position. I mean, this is a, a shame. Uh, if it didn't get top 10, um, I think that's a pity because it, it deserved to. I mean, it was never going to be Christmas number one. Um, you know, and there were some big singles coming out Christmas 84, like Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Power of Love, Wham! Last Christmas. Um, but if it wasn't for Band Aid, you know, it would have been quite an open field for the Christmas top spot. Back when the Christmas number one mattered, of course. Great stuff, that. Love Slade, all join hands. Alright, so at number 31 is the late Tina Turner and Private Dancer. Another promo video here. Uh, Tina Turner is not someone you'd get on top of the pops in the actual studio particularly very often, although I do remember specifically she did she sang Goldeneye, um, the Bond theme in the studio in that would have been 1995 I think and I'm sure she's been on top of the pops uh, subsequently but you know being American and you know no doubt in demand for tours and other publicity in the US and elsewhere it's not like they could just say hey Tina or not well her real name was Annie Mae Bullock wasn't it uh, pop over, just nip, out, nip over on Concord, because yes, Concord was still a thing, of course, at, around this time, and uh, show up on top of the pops for us, will you? I think this gets, I think this gets top 10. The, I'll have put the chart position on screen. Um, you know, this will have been one of her bigger hits, from from this decade, certainly. I uh, it's been years since I've heard this, actually. Oddly enough, I don't think I've ever seen the promo video for it. Yeah, uh, I, I quite like it. It's all right. Certainly nothing so far I've, I've disliked or even thought has been average. There we go, that was Private Dancer from Tina Turner. The next band arrived in the country about a week ago, and on Saturday they embark on a nationwide tour, 30 dates, finishing in Wembley on the 14th and 15th of December. The band is Cool and the Gang, and this is their latest hit called Fresh. All right, number 19, Fresh from Cool and the Gang. Which one's cool? Is it the guy there on vocals? It's a bit like asking which one's Echo out of Echo and the Bunny Men, isn't it, I think. Uh, they've all got their Feed the World Band-Aid shirts on there, so Band-Aid getting a lot of um, publicity, a lot of advertising, for want of a better term, on the BBC here. Of course, the BBC then, as in now, wasn't allowed to overtly advertise anything apart from um, its own in-house products. That's why you would get like kind of a basic ad for like Radio Times magazine and and um, other BBC magazines like Fast Forward, we used to be one for like teenagers, and um, Top Gear magazine and stuff, you'd get like a very kind of basic photo and voiceover ad because it was a, B a BBC publication. But you know, I suppose they're not breaking any advertising rules by just having everyone in those um, feed the world. Oh, and on the back, I think it says, "Let them know it's Christmas." And, and they've got the single out nice and quick. They've got the T-shirts to go with them out rather promptly and dole them out among the celebrities on TOTP this week. 
Yeah, um, I doubt that there's many people, certainly my age and older, who don't know this. Uh, it's one of those songs, I hear it kind of from time to time, just about, out and about, or uh, some incidental music on something, and I always forget exactly who who's done it, so, you know, cool in the gang, I shouldn't forget now. I will forget, no doubt, in months, years to come. I'll be like, I'll hear fresh again, like, oh, who was that? This is decent enough. Again, I'm really enjoying this edition. Um, not my usual cup of tea, something like this, but it's, it's a good, it's a good mid '80s pop song. Let's be honest. And uh, as I say, I think Nick Kershaw and Slade have been the highlights for me so far. So we'll take some to beat them, but uh, we'll see, shall we? course let me know in the comments what you what you think to this edition of Top of the Pops. Let me know your thoughts about the end of the monthly reactions and your thoughts about occasional editions of the reaction series uh, going forward from 2024. Ah. Oh. Oh, love it. Yeah, um, it's another promo video. So quite promo heavy this edition, surprisingly. Um, I'd have thought they will go in the top of the pop studio at some point in December. Um, it's at number three. It does get to number one, but it only has a week at number one as um, Band Aid. Uh, go straight in the week out week after so yeah actually so next week's chart i would have thought this would be the at number one first week of december and then that be when band-aid's been out and then the week after yeah i think i've got my late 1984 timeline it's sorted in my head now it's all easy to look up anyway uh yeah this is uh, this is a lovely song this um you know it, People consider it a Christmas song, and the video certainly hints at kind of the, you know, the, the Christmas story. Um, uh, I've always loved the video as well, actually. I just think it's really, you know, it's really evocative. And Frankie, I mean, they were the band of 84. I mean, relax, it was incredible just how that hung around the chart so long. Then we had two tribes that spent... I don't know, was it only daft like about nine weeks at number one? And Relax was still, you know, hanging around as well. And then Power of Love, um, whether it would have stayed, I don't think this would have been the Christmas number one had there been no Band Aid. Because don't forget, Wham was coming out a few weeks later in December with Last Christmas, and that would have, have been a, a dead cert for the actual Christmas number one. So I don't think Frankie would have made it that long, but. Um, they did get number one with this, and well deserved, because this is my favourite Frankie single by a long straight. And I love Two Tribes, I like Relax. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, which was the final single off the album of the same name. Uh, not so keen on. And uh, the couple that I remember off their second and final album, Liverpool, I think that was called, um, were a bit patchy, a bit average. But, yeah... Um, always gives me a nice warm feeling um, whenever I hear this. You know, making me feel all Christmassy right now. Which is a bit weird because I'm filming this quite a way in advance and it's not near Christmas yet at all, but it's still, still giving me that nice festive kind of vibe. Yeah, I've got the 12 inch single of this, it's got some interesting mixes and variant versions on it. Um, as was the case with Frankie Goes to Hollywood and their, com and their record company ZTT, 
Um, I think that was partly why Relax in particular and also Two Tribes just stayed on the charts along because ZTT just kept releasing new mixers, new 12 inches, uh, presumably multiples of the 7 inch single as well. But yeah, and it's, it's a real kind of departure from when you think about Frankie and their videos and their performances about how sort of hedonistic they were. And then they've got this retelling of the birth of Christ here. It's, um, you know, it's completely a 360 really, but... Three wise men there. Yeah, um... This is rapidly becoming one of my favourite reactions just for the quality of the music we've had. I mean, I knew 84 had some strong stuff in the chart that year. But um, we're hearing, you know, as far as I've gone to, we've heard three excellent singles and this one, um, Power of Love, Frankie. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, one of my all-time favourite singles, this, and certainly up there as possibly my favourite Christmas related single. Even though the lyrics aren't necessarily that Christmassy, the video certainly is. Alright, a first look at the charts and it is a top 40 today. <laughs> I'm a fan of that, we all stand together. Eugene Wilde got to get you home tonight at 36. And Big Country, a new entry at 35, where the rose is sown. Julian Lennon, too late for goodbyes at 34. And Maroda and Oki together in another good song. Blasphemous rumors from Depeche and another good one. Some good stuff in this chart. Private dancer. Ultravox and Love's Great Adventure at 30. I like that as well, Love's Great Adventure. Oh, Paul McCartney getting two in the top 40. Former number one there, Stevie Wonder. Like Alright, Madonna, Like a Virgin is up at 27, I think. Right, um, I'm always a bit loathed. I've, I've said this before, and, and sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't, but I'm always worried that I'm just having to cut Madonna out. Because um, her publishers and record label and everything are just really gung ho. You know, I'm not pirating YouTube and publishers and record companies. I'm reacting, I'm talking over it. If I was pirating, I'd be shutting up now, wouldn't I? <laughs> like a version, of course, from the album of the same name. Not a, not a Madonna single that I would rank as kind of elite tier, but it's a good one. So. Still on a great run, really, in this edition of Top of the Pops. Nothing that I've found below good yet. And like a virgin, no exception. A decent single. Certainly one of Madonna's, you know, kind of signature songs from, from the mid-80s. You know, she was getting massive already at this point when... I suppose she'd only really been charted, at least in the UK, probably mm, only really under a year. I think 84 was her breakout year, I think. Um, trying to think, um, like a virgin album, I'll, have put, I'll put it on screen, but... Um, I don't know if that came out in the UK anyway, in late 84 or early 85. Because I think her first album, while it was probably a 1983 release in the US, I'm fairly sure that would have come out over here, or Europe, in 84. Looks like it's filmed in Venice, I would have thought, and has it in an educated guest there. Although they've managed to hire a lion from somewhere. It's been a good few years since I've seen this video as well, funnily enough. 
another promo. Um, normally, if there's a Top of the Pops I see and there's like a lot of promo videos on it, I feel a little bit short-changed, but not today, because everything's just been really good. The Bunch of Wankers, Matt Bianco. Look it up if you're wondering why I'm calling him a Bunch of Wankers. Love it. Mm. Pretty good single from Human League, Louise. Not my very favourite by them, but decent enough. Uh, right, Alvin Stardust, I won't run away. Um, I'm ch kind of chuckling to myself um, because it was, and I'm looking at my um, dates on here. That's all I've got on this, by the way. Dates of, oh, I think I flashed up what the uh, last um, December's edition was. Uh, yeah, well, if you're able to pause that, well done. But I'm chuckling because uh, Al Alvin Stardust, I reacted to him on, uh, that would have been, I think, the edition from the 24th of September 1981 and I think I was saying at that point was he still having hits in the 80s and then look three years later and he's got another one he um, you know it's weird my, my earliest memory of Alvin Stardust was him being a kids TV host it's weird how some things just kind of stick with you he used to present, I think it might have been on like Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings or something like that on ITV, but it would have then been part, you know, like as it was breakfast telly, it would have been TV AM technically. Uh, he presented like some kids thing where he'd like do links and possibly read stories. I don't know if he sung on it, he might have done, but I don't recall. And then the, it showed, they'd show cartoons and kids shows in between, you know, the sort of thing. Certainly us here in Britain, you know, grew up on that sort of kids TV where it was the presenter doing the links and, you know, maybe phone-ins and, you know, general banter and what have you. And then inserting cartoons and, and programs and stuff in between. And yeah, Alvin Stardust, he did a bit of that for TV AM slash ITV in uh, it would have been after this because if I remember watching it then like my memory as far as TV is concerned seems to get sort of more less hazy and more fleshed out from um, about 1986 onwards uh, well You know, I, I, I'm trying to say something negative about this, but the thing is, it's, uh, it's kind of growing on me. I'm sure it's not unfair to say this is probably the least good thing that's been on so far, but I do still quite like this. It's weird, I don't know, I must be in an exceptionally good mood today. But even this, Alvin Stardust, who really was passe, you know, nearly 10 years before this, arguably. I mean, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd started recording as Shane Fenton in the 1960s, so you know, he, was a, he was a veritable veteran of the music industry by this point, you know, 20 plus years probably. <laughs> I don't know, just as kind of like a lightweight pop song, I kind of, I kind of like that. I would even go far to say I probably liked it a bit more than... Um, than your rhythmics and Tina Turner. Here we go, top ten. At ten, Caribbean Queen from Billy Ocean. The Wild Boys, Duran Duran at nine. At eight, Hard Habit to Break, Chicago. Shaking Stevens at seven with Teardrops. At six, Sex Crime, 1984, The Arrhythmics. At five, The Never Ending Story from Limar. Good song, Never Ending Story. Four, Great stuff, Riddle. Riddle. The highest 
Brilliant. Three, Certainly my highlight. Power of Love, love it. Alright, so what is at number one? Which means there is a new Ooh. number one. And it is Jim Diamond, and I should have known better. Alright, okay. Jim Diamond is your number one for the week of uh, 29th of November. No, he said 26th then. We're 1984 with I Should Have Known Better. Now then. I... I kind of remember this, but... I, I, I can't really speak on it. It's... It sounds like... It sounds like something that maybe was like featured on a TV or a film, but I don't honestly know. I mean, Jim Diamond is someone who... He had this hit, and I think he had some other minor hits, and I think he was in a band, um, and I couldn't say who they were and what happened to them, but I'm sure he was in a group of some sort, and I'll put some information on screen, obviously. Uh, but this... And it, I don't know, it kind of feels a bit one-hit wonder, but I, I don't know, I'm, I think he did other things that, that did okay. But, you know, this was certainly 100% um, positive. This was his only UK number one single. You know, ironically, it being number one, uh, this is probably, uh, this is probably the, the song I would Say, I don't particularly like the, the one that we've seen in this edition. Everything else I thought was at least good, ranging to very good, to absolutely excellent in the case of Frankie Goes to Hollywood and Slade and Nick Kershaw as well, to be fair. But this, you know, it's not dreadful, but it's, it's kind of a little bit too easy listening for me. He's, he don't he don't look much like a pop star, does he, Jim Diamond? He kind of looks like a a sort of like if you if you'd ordered a Jimmy Somerville from um, the Wix catalogue. <laughs> no offense to fans of Jimmy Somerville or indeed customers of Wix. I'm pretty certain this is its one week at number one because, as you saw, Frankie Goes to Hollywood was a high new entry for it being 1984 at number three. And um, they have to have their week at number one before Band-Aid Band uh, dominate the rest of uh, the month of December. might be singing live. Yeah. <laughs> Even the ending, it's kind of grown on me a tiny bit. I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to that. But, yeah, you know, this has been a really, really strong edition of Top of the Pops, possibly, and you know, your mileage may and probably will vary, but possibly the the best, just for terms of, in terms of consistency, episode of Top of the Pops that I've reacted to, and um, it's it's one of the last ones. It, it won't be the last one because obviously we've got next month, and um, I will do at least one or two next year, as you know. Oh well, God! Uh, well, we have to have something bloody awful to kind of put put the dampener on it. And here we are, do the conga by Black Lace is what's playing us out. Oh God! <laughs> in fairness, and you can tell I'm in a good mood because I'm even trying to be positive about Black Bleeding Lace. But in fairness, do the conga is better than Agadoo. I, if this was Agadoo now, I'd be like, nah. I'm trying to eat my own hand, really, in uh, 
sheer embarrassment at the situation. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Top of the Pops. And uh, again, I said it earlier, but I do want to say a big thank you to everyone who supported this series over the years really um, or if you've only been watching these reactions for a short time you know however long you've been part of part of the club I appreciate you a lot you know um, I've done this series for a long time it takes a lot of editing one a month I did do two a month for a little while and it was too much really um, but one a month I've, I've been through almost all the years that I really can and want to cover uh, certain years I wanted to cover again like 1984 I'd only done that once before um, other ones certainly from earlier this year I wanted to have another look at as well as years from like the 1970s that I'd, I've never never reacted to at all and we even got a 1969 edition done as well, didn't we? But anyway, that's going to be it for me. I've talked all over the credits. And it only remains for me to say now, thank you again for watching. Please join us for the series finale next month in December 2023. Find out what year and which episode of Top of the Pops it'll be from. That didn't sound right. Right, I'm going to go now. And I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for what will be the last regular, but we'll do more in 2024, no doubt. Top of the Pops reaction. Cheers, everyone. See ya! Would you please make sure that you take coats and anything you brought with you home with you? Good night. Thank you.